Hello and welcome to the brand new This Week in Ocean City. I'm Logan Duble. It's a thrill to be back bringing you the latest resort hot topics in this new year. From our cover story on the closing of Phillips Crab House, looking ahead to exciting events, checking in on the pulse of OC, and mixing in local headlines and culture, we've got it all covered right here, right now, on This Week in Ocean City. And as we enter a brand new year, we're saying farewell to one of our favorite Ocean City hotspots. After more than six decades, Phillips Seafood Restaurant on 21st Street closed its doors before the holidays. While the restaurant may be gone, its memory and impact on the resort community over generations will never be forgotten. We begin with this week's cover story in which we're taking a look back at the impact of Phillips. It's a one-of-a-kind restaurant that millions of Ocean City visitors will never forget. For 66 marvelous years, Phillips' iconic crab house on 21st Street and the Bay made all residents and tourists feel like family. That's why when the restaurant announced its plans to close and sell last month, longtime Ocean City patrons knew that they were losing a special place. The genius of Bryce and Shirley Phillips, who hailed from Fishing Creek, Maryland, the crab house opened its doors in 1956. The pair had toyed with selling crabs in Baltimore, but knew they could be much more successful down the ocean. And so so they came. Upon its opening, Phillips was a crab takeout business, but it soon became a local phenomenon with people wanting to dine in. That led to an unbelievable expansion, creating a whopping 1,400 seats in the restaurant. They even offered extensive financial plans for their workers, which is why the owner's grandson and namesake, who now works for Phillips Seafood himself, will always remember how special the crab house was to its employees. Growing up, my grandparents always talked about family. You know, they, they talked about, you know, not not, you know, not just your nuclear family, your extended family, but the Phillips family. And they really preached that and they kind of made that their mantra over the years. And, you know, all these young men and women that came from colleges around the area to work there in the summertime, you know, all throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s. My, my grandparents, I mean, really, particularly my grandmother, really looked after these kids like they were her own. It just built a camaraderie amongst our staff that that really, honestly, it really lives today. The employees and others viewed it as such a success that it kept on expanding. Phillips previously had another location at the Beach Plaza Hotel, as well as on 141st Street, both of which only recently closed. Looking back on the legacy of Phillips, Bryce and others could not be prouder of its contributions to making the town what it is today. That includes Mayor Rick Meehan, who said the memories will last a lifetime. Plans are quietly underway for the big building, which management says was simply becoming too difficult to maintain. While we don't know what's next for the building, we know that this isn't the end of the line for Phillips. In fact, the big name isn't going anywhere. The Baltimore restaurant and smaller Phillips airport stops will remain open, and Phillips will continue selling its products, leading the steamed crab market. The past two weeks has been um, equal parts somber, sad, but at the same time, really enlightening. Um, and it's just been a look to the past with all these amazing outreaches of love and support. A building is technically, it's a pile of sticks and nails, right? But the Crab House took on and really took on a life of its own and kind of became its own living, breathing thing. One thing is for sure, the love and support for Phillips is undeniable. We'll certainly miss the restaurant, but it leaves behind a tremendous legacy. And now to your headlines, Sunfest often kicks off the fall season in Ocean City at the end of September. While the festival will return for its 47th year in 2022, it may be pushed back on the calendar in order to accommodate a very busy fall schedule. After considerable discussions at City Hall, organizers are concerned about the logistics of keeping Sunfest in its traditional spot at the end of September, with typical events such as Bike Fest, the Wine Festival, and the disruptive H2OI pop-up rally all in the same month, along with a new three-day music festival presented by promoter C3. Council Secretary Tony DeLuca and others pushed for more answers to determine whether the logistics could be resolved so that setup and teardown concerns would not impact the traditional Sunfest date. Special Events Director Frank Miller noted that many attendees approved of extending the fall calendar into October, but some business owners fear that they won't have enough staff that far into the offseason. The mayor and city council are expected to continue this discussion in the coming weeks. 
And before Sunfest will come Springfest, one of the premier arts and craft shows in the entire country. Celebrating its 31st year in 2022, it also includes live music, Great Eastern Shore foods, along with beer and wine. This week, the resort announced that musical powerhouse Starship will headline the big weekend in May. Tickets are now available at OCOcean.com. You can also expect more information in the coming months about increased Broadway shows and concerts in Ocean City as part of new strategic tourism planning. Officials also made clear this week that drone shows will return in the summer. And just like the rest of the world, the Winter Fest of Lights adapted during the pandemic and has now adjusted to a wildly successful new normal. For years, visitors rode the tram through Northside Park to view the spectacles, but for the past two years, Winterfest has been a walkthrough event. This year, attendance jumped significantly to over 100,000 visitors, up from 74,000 in 2020. Visitors also enjoyed all the gorgeous lights and the massive Christmas tree, as well as pictures with Santa, which were up 86% from the record in 2017. Thanks to everyone who came to support Ocean City during the holiday season. There may be a new payment option on Ocean City buses come 2023. Resort officials are looking into adopting an electronic credit card style payment option on the town's bus system. As of now, visitors need their cash to ride the bus. This differs from the tram service on the boardwalk, which recently took on an electronic payment system itself. Officials are proceeding with caution in this process since the buses are federally regulated, but they hope to achieve progress very shortly. And speaking of the trams, resort officials are looking to avoid another predicament like last year, a driver shortage. Town leaders discuss possible incentives, including wage hikes. However, the worker shortage goes far beyond transportation and into other departments as well. So some say action is needed across the board. Regardless, let's hope we have people on the job come Memorial Day. And now for some news by the numbers, 6%, that's the new room tax some Ocean City officials are proposing, or at least wish to have the ability to eventually reach. This would mark a 1% increase from the current tax of 5% implemented in 2019. The increased tax would contribute to tourism funds and a possible new indoor athletic facility. Just this week, county commissioners voted to ask state legislators for a permission to approve this Ocean City measure. Mayor Rick Meehan has made clear that the room tax may not be raised all the way to 6%, but he would like for the town to have that ability. This the proposal is gaining significant criticism from former councilman Vince Gisrael, who has begun a referendum effort opposed to the room tax distribution formula and a possible raise. He has until the beginning of February to garner about 600 signatures to get the issue placed on the ballot for voters to decide. Stay tuned. The 31st, the end of this month, is when city manager Doug Miller's resignation takes effect. Miller has led City Hall since 2016 and is only the town's fifth ever manager. Miller's next chapter is unclear, but he has a long history on the shore, beginning his career in Ocean City government before heading to Snow Hill. His colleagues have wished him well on his next adventure. The town announced just last week that longtime city engineer Terry McGean will take over February 1st, bringing more than 31 years of Ocean City experience to the job. 35,000, that's how much square footage is available in downtown Ocean City for a possible seasonal worker housing project led by the Ocean City Development Corporation, also known as OCDC. Town officials met last month to discuss the possible project between Somerset and Dorchester Streets and Baltimore and Philadelphia Avenues. As workers continue to flock to Ocean City in the summer and demand for staff increases, housing has always been a challenge. Stay tuned for updates on this important project. $150,000, that's how much money the Ocean City Life Saving Station Museum has obtained in a grant from Governor Larry Hogan to begin exterior renovations on its new branch, the Old Bank of Ocean City building on Dorchester Street. After closing in 2019, the museum pursued the building and hopes to make significant progress on the exterior before the summer. Museum Board President Nancy Howard and curator Christine Oberblum hope to eventually open the building to the public with brand new exhibits highlighting the history of our town. And finally, 870, that's how many participants braved the cold and made it to the 28th annual Atlantic General Hospital Penguin Swim on New Year's Day. The event, which takes place along the Princess Royale Beach, is an exciting annual fundraiser. Participants traveled from as far as Texas and ranged in age from 1 to 91. The water temperature was plenty chilly at 48 degrees, but it was all for a great cause as they raised a total of more than $100,000 for the hospital. And that's your news by the numbers. After a heated summer, it appears as though resort leaders are getting closer to establishing a diversity and inclusion officer position. You'll remember those viral videos from last summer showing police officers using force against young black teens accused of vaping on the boardwalk, which is a municipal infraction. These videos outraged some state leaders and the NAACP who met with Mayor Meehan in July. 
Currently, officials are looking into a typical diversity and inclusion officer or a broader position that would include retention, recruitment, and inclusion. Look out for more word on this position in the coming weeks. We discussed cleanup and anti-litter efforts extensively here on the show last year, and we're glad to report that efforts to stay clean and go green are continuing in the new year. Garvey Heiderman, owner of The Hobbit Restaurant and an enthusiastic compost leader on the shore, now leads Ocean Compost, partnering with restaurants around town. Many businesses now participate in the program, including the Dough Roller and Mother's Cantina. He aims to compost 250 tons this year, cutting into the waste collected by the town, much of which is compostable. Keep an eye out for what the Ocean City Green Team accomplishes this year. Just because it's the off-season, the work never stops here, where beach replenishment crews are already gearing up for beachgoers. Beach replenishment, which began in the 90s and takes place about every four years, started in October and wrapped up around the new year. Crews work from the Delaware line all the way down to 27th Street. And the sand isn't the only thing getting replaced this off-season. The boardwalk is also getting a major upgrade with a portion of its once-in-a-decade redecking project starting. Right now, workers are redecking 27th to 15th Streets with an expected April completion and will then work on the southern section next off-season. Crews are working on some southern portions, as you can see in this clip. The museum actually had to lift its famous anchor from the boardwalk in anticipation of some of the repairs. Boardwalk redecking last took place in 2010 and 2011. Planning for this particular project was challenging due to the nationwide lumber shortage amidst the pandemic. All in all, the project costs a total of $2.2 million, and we hope you enjoy the new and improved Boardwalk come springtime. It's a message in a bottle, a wild story connecting Ocean City and, get this, Ireland, as the dispatch reported. Three years ago, an 11-year-old Ocean City resident sent a message along with two $1 bills off into the ocean currents, which somehow carried the note all the way to northwestern Ireland. What's more shocking is that the phone number listed on the note is now disconnected with the Belfast couple that discovered it just recently found the original family on social media and got connected. Now they hope to one day welcome the Ocean City resident to the beach in Ireland where the bottle was found. The boy, now 14, had forgotten all about the letter, but now has new friends from across the world. What a story. Let's get to what's buzzing in Ocean City right now with our brand new segment, Boardwalk Talk. We'll post a poll online before each episode and reveal the results right here on our show. This week we asked residents and tourists for their thoughts on the Cambria Lights. While you may be unfamiliar with the Bayfront Cambria Hotel, you've surely seen its bright lights when coming down the Route 50 bridge at night. While many believe that the lights are glorious or are mostly indifferent to them, some critics believe that the building is providing an unnecessary source of light pollution and that the lights are simply too bright. A few months back, Ocean City officials said they would begin consulting with planning commissioners and also revisit their ordinance policies before taking any action. So, should the lights stay or go? Here's what our readers had to say. They were quite divided, with 51% saying the lights should go, 43% want them to stay, and 6% have no preference. One commenter said, they need to be softer, not so bright and harsh, perhaps even a different color. Another said, light signifies hope, stirs positive apprehension for enjoyment, and this emitting light draws visitors, especially children. It signifies that for several days there will be fun, Keep the lights burning. A third participant added, it gives some jazz to the skyline. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but thanks to those who participated and voted in this inaugural edition of Boardwalk Talk. Now let's get to Paint and Paradise, a unique look at the local art scene. Today we're highlighting January exhibits at the Art League of Ocean City, located in the State of the Art Gallery on 94th Street. Check out Shared Visions, the annual collaboration between artists and the Ocean City Writers Group. The writers submit poems and stories, which then inspire visual artists to create accompanying works. This extraordinary creative explosion is now in its ninth year of partnership. The gallery is featuring a group show entitled My Favorite Things, in addition to the work of several artists. This includes Lamont Hall, an Art League scholarship winner from Pocomo City, now based in New York, studying at the Pratt Institute. Angela Pierce of Selbyville is showing off her oil paintings this month, along with Susan Allen of Luz displaying her mosaics. These exhibits will remain until January 29th. That's this month's Art Spotlight, and we look forward to showing off more work next month.
This week's history segment is bound to make you hungry as we focus in on Thrasher's Fries. Although many businesses come and go in this competitive resort environment, it is no mistake that Thrasher's remains an Ocean City staple after nearly a century. It's not just a craving, but a timeless local phenomenon that has spanned generations. Today, the town is recognized for recruiting international J-1 workers each summer, but original owner Mr. J.T. Thrasher found his employees from a Christian-affiliated school in his home state of Georgia. For housing, many of the girls stayed on the second floor of the old Ocean City Bank building on Dorchester Street and South Baltimore Avenue. In light of health challenges, Thrasher sold his business to well-known Ocean City entrepreneur Franklin Hastings. Then, in 1974, Charles Buddy Jenkins took over and has led the French Fry Hub ever since. Jenkins is also known locally as the operator of Jolly Roger in several hotels. Thrasher's hardworking employees who work together to deliver 42,000 pounds of fries each week during the summer while maintaining the secret recipe are why we believe the local staple will continue to thrive as it enters its 93rd year in operation. And that's it for this edition of This Week in Ocean City. Thank you to all the loyal supporters of OceanCity.com and everyone who helped us relaunch this show. We look forward to bringing you more compelling stories in 2022. I'm Logan Dubal. Have a great week, Ocean City.